everybody, Livingston here. Today we're jumping into episode 25 of The Twilight Zone. People are all like all over. Looking forward to this one. I haven't seen it. Let's jump in. Boom. Tilt down. Man, every episode. The blasting area will be cleared by 0200. Oh dear. It's a rocket. Is it a missile or is it like a space rocket for astronauts? It's an odd way to spend the last night, isn't it? Well, last night on Earth you don't spend looking at your trans... Space. Astronauts. That's going to be our world for a long time, Sam. Hmm. Are you afraid? Kinda. I would be. Getting ready to blast into space, sitting on thousands of pounds of thrust that is fueled by lots and lots of explosive stuff. <laughs> That's not fun to me. I'm a scientist, a biologist. My world is one of books and slides and microscopes. Pretty safe. Leave the body back here where it belongs. Just send the mind. They can do that now. Got Skype. Well, the unknown, sure. The loneliness, the silence. Well, you guys will be together. But I've got a philosophy about people. They're the same all over. They'd be the same here on Earth as in the furthest reaches of space. Interesting. So he believes that humans are throughout the galaxy, throughout the universe. I think it all depends on your environment, what you evolved from. Who knows? Warren Marcuson. Warren Marcus, 35. Samuel A. Conrad, age 31. Roddy McDowell. If you don't know who Roddy McDowell is, he was on Fright Night, Planet of the Apes, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, basically the majority of the Planet of the Apes movies, and uh, Lassie. I'm talking about the Lassie from 1943 with Elizabeth Taylor. That was a ways ago. Oh no. Well, looks like the mission went awry. <laughs> Marcuson. 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 What a name. I thought it was Moccasin for a minute, like uh, Water Moccasin or the shoes. <laughs> well, that's not good. Better wake him up. Hey, you okay? Check his pulse, man. There you go. Well, he must be still alive. Was this adrenaline? Hey, good morning. Moccasin. Any landing you can walk away from, remember? What about the ship? You, you uh, rest for a while. All right. All right, we'll see. I wonder where they landed. So much tapping, sir. That's what I like about Twilight Zone. They don't show much, but they're very good at building the suspense on what is the possibility of what could be out there, the mystery. Some shows are better than others, episodes, but uh, this has got me intrigued. Like, where did they land? Who's tapping on the outside? Sam? Yeah? Sam! What's up? How long did I sleep? Uh, a couple of hours. Well, let's plant the flag. But there's plenty of time. We've come 35 million miles. Yeah, it's a long ways. So, another few hours won't make any difference. You, you make a valid point. Is it him going crazy? <laughs> yeah, I think he's starting to wonder, like, do you not hear that tapping? You won't be able to open it, the hydraulics are. Put her on the auxiliary, then. We can open it. Open the door, Conrad. I've already told you that door. You're a liar. You can open the door. Why won't you open the door? I want to know now. I don't want to open it. Why not? Because. It's not a good enough reason. Why? Why did you come along anyway? I want you to open the door now. You can lock it behind me. Please, help me up. I'm busted up inside. I think I'm bleeding in there. Internally, huh? I think he's going to make it. I get a strange hunch. If there's anybody out there, they'll help you. As long as they've got minds and hearts, that means they've got souls. Is he going to die before he gets to see it? I think so. Don't leave me alone, Mark. Don't leave me alone. Dear God. Well, the last resort is put your suit on and hope for the best outside. You said whatever is out there is just like us. Well, I don't know that. <clears throat> oh, no. Be calm. Don't just shoot. Anybody? Oh. It's a lot of a lot of people. How do you do? You see the map painting in the background? Oh, they're just fascinated by him. They're not even scared. Put your gun away, dude. No, no. Hmm. You're just like I am. 
Do you speak English? Face, body. You're just like I am. Don't be frightened. They, they don't seem scared. Uh, Samuel Conrad. Huh? That name, understand? We are the third planet from the sun. This is you. Oh, they're on Mars. The other one is dead. Oh, so you understand me. Great. Don't be alarmed, Mr. Conrad. We don't intend to harm you either. As you'll no doubt soon realize, you are speaking our language. Huh? Unconscious transference. You'd call it hypnosis of a sort. Interesting. I mean, you're, you're human beings, just like I am. Uh-huh. People. Marcuson said you would be. Marcuson. He's dead. I wonder if they'd be able to do something for him. We'll bury your friend for you. Well, I guess I can't do anything. We'll repair your ship for you, too. Any questions? Like, how long have you been here? Uh, what's... How old your civilization? What kind of technology do you have, you know? They are people, just like us. I'm feeling like they're not just people. Because... We're not at the end yet. <laughs> I just feel like there's bad things involved. We'll answer all your questions, Mr. Conrad. Okay. They just seem all matter-of-fact about things. First, you must rest here for a while, while we prepare a place for you. We'll be back soon. You do have a name, don't you? Yes. I'm called Tinya. Tinya. Will you tell the others how very appreciative I am? No one will hurt you. No one will hurt you. You must believe that. Well... I guess I have no choice, really. She can't look her look him in the eye for some reason. I think she's keeping something from him. They're gonna shut the door on him. Yep. Actually, he's the one that's shutting the door, I guess, isn't he? Because he's like, I guess I'll trust you. First, we have a surprise for you. Oh, a very pleasant surprise. Okay. Where are we going? Now that's the surprise, Mr. Conrad. All right. Are you coming? She seems worried. Yes, I will come. You don't have to. I mean, jeez. Is this a Martian house? Is this the way you live? Nope. We built this during the night because we assume this is the way you people live. Oh, well, how do you know this? How do you assume? Is it like you just t pulled it from my head? I have a feeling like they want to keep him or something, you know? How could you build it so quickly? How could you possibly know? From your mind. Would you care to see the rest of the house? Sure. Are they like trying to entice him to stay? Is this a house that he knows? Or is it just some random place they like yeah this is what a kitchen looks like it's unbelievable you express an interest in seeing our city meeting our people but we'll go out and arrange that hmm. enjoy your house oh, uh, let me show you out after all it is my house <laughs> <laughs> yeah mission accomplished whatever the mission is Tina, Cares i will see you again won't i of course you will well what is her deal Ice cubes. <laughs> That's exactly what I like. That's the best scotch I ever drank. Huh. So how do I make fire? Oh, with a gas stove. Hmm. It's kind of blank there. Oh, this is not good. So he's locked in. I knew something was up. So what did he walk into? A window? No window. There is no window. Oh no. There's a seam. There aren't any windows anywhere! No, there's a window. He's in a zoo. Damn. Why have you locked me in here? Why are you looking at me like that? Earth creature in his native habitat. I'm in a zoo. And she knew all along. Marcuson! Marcuson, you are right! Yep. People are alike. Very much so. People are alike everywhere. Comes from primitive planet named Earth. And he will remain here in his cage with the running water and the electricity and the central heat as long as he lives. Samuel Conrad has found the Twilight Zone. Well, that is a very dim and dire ending. Well, that's it. People are like all over episode 25 of The Twilight Zone. It's very true that human beings, when they don't know something, they either attack it or they cage it to study it, analyze it to the point where you end up killing it or just making whatever specimen it is inside the jar or cage just uh, hate their life to the point where they just want to die. It just, I don't know. It's, 
It's sad. I understand it from a different perspective because, hell, everybody has gone to a zoo and we look at animals through the glasses, but I haven't been to a zoo in a long time. And the reason being is because I don't like seeing things in cages. I'm very much like Tina in that respect. And she seemed like somebody who knew what was coming, but the audience didn't. And we were always looking at her going, why is she so down? Why is she so glum and not happy? But at the same time, you have these people on Mars that just don't really care about your well-being. And I think if human beings on Earth in this episode, in this era would find out that this has happened, we would probably send a nuke up to him. <laughs> you know, like we wouldn't give it a, a thought and probably create war with another uh, race of people. But it's uh, an interesting show. Not sure where it'll rank in my top five when it comes to the uh, final episode because uh, I do plan on going through and seeing which are my favorites and which were the worst. So far, I haven't had any like, these are horrible episodes. I've had like good to great you know so i haven't had anything bad coming out of the twilight zone everything has been interesting the stories have been unique and different or they've been touched on at least in things that i have seen in the future projects past the episode because it seemed like a lot of people watched this as a kid and when they grew up they made projects much like them and it's cool to see it's cool to see that a lot of things were taken from the twilight zone but uh, let's jump into some trivia and see what it took to get this show off the ground and into a reality. The living room set is the same one seen in Third from the Sun, 1960. It is a redressed version of George's living room from the time machine. Oh, we get to see the time machine set again. That's crazy. Marcuson mentions they have traveled 35 million miles to Mars. The distance between Earth and Mars ranges between 36 million and 250 million miles due to both having slightly elliptical orbits and different lengths of time to orbit the sun. As in many other episodes, several props of Forbidden Planet 1956 are used, especially in the interior of the astronaut spaceship. That movie's come up actually a few times in past Twilight Zone episodes, so it's pretty cool that they kept utilizing things from the same sorts of movies like The Time Machine and uh, Forbidden Planet. Rod Serling changed a couple of the elements from the original source story, Brothers Beyond the Void by Paul W. Fairman, for this episode. And the original story, the protagonist is Marcuson, and Conrad is only in the beginning of the story as Marcuson makes the trip to Mars alone. Serling also changed the climactic utterance from the story's mundane people are the same everywhere to his more poignant version. It isn't clear why Serling changed the story and made Conrad the protagonist. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I guess because uh, maybe due to the actor, but uh, if they were writing a story before the actor showed up, the one who, uh, Roddy McDowell, you know, he was kind of a name back then. In the opening monologue, Mark Markison is described as 35 years old and Sam Conrad as 31. At the time the episode was released, McDowell was indeed 31, but Kam but Kami had just turned 28. Oh my god, people looked so freaking old back then. <laughs> Another Twilight Zone featuring multiple actors who would later appear in Star Trek 1966, with three playing in multiple episodes. Most prominent Susan Oliver appeared as Vina in The Cage. Sam Conrad's fate as a zoo attraction due to him being declared an inferior species resembles the real-life experience of Oda Binga, a 4'11 African man who was put on display at the Bronx Zoo in New York in 1906. According to a New York Times article from back then, Binga was one of a race that scientists do not rate high in the human scale. Wow. Coincidentally, both this episode and The Cage 1966 not only both feature Susan Oliver, but the basic stories imprisoning humans against their will and treating them as specimens are similar as well. I do remember seeing Susan Oliver in other things. I can't remember. I didn't recognize her up until the point where uh, they mentioned her from Star Trek, but she played the green alien actress that I guess Captain Kirk was with. Um, so that was... Uh, pretty cool to see that she was in other things as well. Well, that's it for episode 25. Let me know, comment below what you thought of this episode. And don't forget to like and subscribe to continue on this journey to episode 156 of The Twilight Zone. Until next time, see you later.